In today's video, I will show you how you can create this floral hyena all by yourself in Photoshop. All right, let's dive right into Photoshop. And if you're wondering where I got these images from, you can check the link in the description. There are all these files that I use in this project. So first of all, let's start with pressing Command or Control N to create a new file. And usually what I do is I go for 4,000 by 5,000 pixels. That is like a really good size to work in. You can print large and small and everything. But because I record this video, I have to do it a little bit smaller. So I go for 2,160, 2,700. So my computer doesn't get too slow. But if you are creating yourself, definitely go for 4 by 5,000. And resolution, I well, I keep it at 300. It doesn't really matter here, but when I set it to print, Sometimes they say, oh, you have to make resolution 300. Of course, it don't doesn't really matter because we work in in pixels here on the screen and not for print right now. So let's go for 260 to 700 and create. Now, this one, I can just take it and drag it here. And the first thing, obviously, to do is to convert this to a smart object so we don't lose the quality when we resize it. Now, if we press Ctrl T, we can resize this to make this fit this image. And the next thing I usually always do is I'm going to copy the background layer. So I have the same settings here and I'm going to copy this. So I have a square 2160 by 2160. Create and copy this one, put it here and press command R, R or control R and take these guidelines. And usually I set these guidelines to make sure my, my image doesn't go like that or the most important stuff needs to stay in the square here. Right, so I'm gonna move it like this so we can make it even bigger, just a bit like that. And now we have like more of this hyena here. All right, let's start with doing these things. I have all these images also in the description of the video. These are from Freepik. I just got a subscription at Freepik and I have to say it's really cool because all these files you can use for commercial licenses and you don't have to remove backgrounds, all this stuff. So there's a lot of stuff on there, so definitely check that out. All right, let's first put some of these flowers around them. Don't forget the smart object thing as always. And let's resize this a bit. Now, first of all, I wanna make sure the areas around it. We don't need this one. So first of all, I wanna make sure the areas around them are really full with all this stuff. So I'm just gonna duplicate these and rotate them a bit to make sure we don't see the same patterns around it. So let's just place them around them. Actually, I like to use real photos, but these are graphics, but because I couldn't find f free images or even images without backgrounds or flowers, I don't want to cut out flowers. I don't want to spend lots of time on it. So I'm just going to use these, these graphics instead of real ones. So if you got real photos, that's probably even better. But for this one, I'm going to use this. Now, this was also in this, let's see here, also on the side which you can download and you can see these is our, this is an illustrator. So I had to open illustrator to actually copy these flowers. And after that, I just copy it, press control C and in the Photoshop, I paste it. I don't want to add it to my library. I just want a smart object and that's it. And now I have also good quality of these images. So I'm going to put all these flowers here from these also. And just put them around there. Just make sure the size stays a bit the same. So you don't have like really big flowers, really small ones. It's a bit black there. Not sure what it is, but whatever. I'm going to put it like that. Let's duplicate it one more time. And this one is pretty small, so I can't really use this a lot. Let me put it there. And let's see what we got here. We got more of these flowers. I think three files of these flowers is even enough. Let's see if I can copy this one. So this one, and you can see here, we only have three files that we used for these flowers and I'm just gonna copy and place them around them. If you press Ctrl J, you can duplicate these layers. Now, don't forget to save your work when you get to a point where you have a lot of stuff in your design already because Photoshop can crash sometimes, especially if you have maybe an old computer or if you work with bigger files, it can crash a lot. And sometimes that happened also to me, it just crashed and I lost all my work. And it's gone. So just save your work every like maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes, something like this. Just press Control Command S and it's automatically saved. 
All right, let's put these here. Maybe a couple more of these green ones. I want to have a little bit more green, just like that. And you can see how easy we fill this whole area up with the same flowers. And you can barely even see a pattern in any of these flowers. Let's place them a bit more inside so we can fill this area up. I don't want to see what's behind them. I only want to see his face and these flowers will be around it. So the area behind it, I'm trying to cover it up with all these flowers. And that's really easy by just copying it, rotate it, and you see a different kind of flower. And that's it. And now we can start with getting the lighting right and doing some extra stuff. So first of all, I wanna get the lighting right and later on I will add some little stuff, maybe butterflies or whatever you wanna add, maybe some birds to fill this area around this face also, if you wanna be more creative. Now, first of all, I'm gonna make sure the background is a bit darker because this area here behind, I wanna have it like almost black. So first of all, I'm gonna add a curves adjustment layer on top of this hyena. And don't forget to press this so we only affect the layer underneath it. Now, if we take the highlights and we bring it down, we're gonna make him dark. But we don't wanna make him dark, we only wanna make the background dark. So I'm gonna select the black brush, just the soft round brush, and keep the opacity flow at 100 and make sure your hardness is at zero. Now, if we brush here, oh, black brush, if we brush here, we can remove this. If we use the white brush, we bring it back. Of course, obviously, we want to remove it. So let me first do it again. We want to remove it with a black brush. So let's make sure his face is light. If you want to have lighting on his face, maybe coming from the top or something, you have to make sure this area is light. Maybe the area underneath his face will be darker. Let's also make his ears a bit lighter, this fur here, and this will create a cool effect from the light. Something like this. All right, let's make sure the background is even darker. I wanna have it like super dark. So for this to make areas even darker, I don't wanna mess too much with the curves because if I'm gonna do this, it's gonna look fake, right? So we have to use a brush here. So let's create a new layer on top of it. Press right mouse and create a clipping mask. So we only affect this layer here. Then go to edit, select fill, and fill this with 50% gray. And if we change this to overlay, we don't see it anymore. We only see what we're going to do with these tools here. So for this, I'm gonna select the burn tool here. With the burn tool, we will make areas darker. Let's select highlight first and let's bring it to somewhere around 45 to 50. And let's brush a bit of these areas here, here, here. And you can see it already gets darker and it looks more natural than if we use uh, curves on this. So the curves is the first part and after that to use like brushes to make it even darker, as you can see here. Now, you can also make a bit more dark areas here to get more details in his face. You don't wanna do this too much, just do it a little bit like that. Just a bit of a brushing. I think this is already fine. Now, we switch to mid-tones and we drop the exposure to make it look more natural. And now I'm gonna brush again and make the brush a bit bigger and just brush these areas again, a bit in background here, maybe also here. I think I can even make his face a bit lighter because I feel like this area here got a bit too dark now. And we have lighting coming from there, so it's gonna be a little bit also here maybe. So what I'm gonna to do is I'm gonna select the curves layer again, the mask of it, and brush a bit on these sides here. We can even drop the opacity of the brush here to make it a little bit lighter, not too light, just like that. And this will make it look a bit more natural than if we use like 100%. Let's also make his jaw here a bit lighter so he doesn't get too dark in the background. And maybe a bit here, like that. Right, so that's pretty much it. Now let's go back to the, to the burn tool here. Don't forget to switch these layers if you do some adjustments on other layers. And let's now do shadows and bring it underneath 10 exposure. And this time I can do a little bit in the background. And you can see here it's almost black. Maybe it's already even black and it looks way more natural than with the curves only. So this is good. You can see the before and after we got some natural lighting. Now, let me save this work again, Ctrl C. And now I can do adjustments to these flowers. So first of all, let's put them all in a folder and press Command G or Control G. So if you select them all, hold down Shift, you can put them all in the folder. That's a lot easier to do. 
Now, let's go and add some curves to these to make them first dark, like that. So first I want to have them really dark, almost as dark as the background. So I'm trying to find the, the, same, the same dark tones as the background here, maybe a bit lighter because they are in the foreground and the background is behind him. Something like this. And now I can just brush again. So first of all, I want to have lighting coming from there. Let me put this 200 again. So the lighting will come from, it's maybe there. Let's do it from the top. Right, so from there, it's gonna go here, it's gonna go here, and maybe this one is a bit darker because his face is covering these here, and these are covered by his ears. So let's do a bit here. Let's see, let's do a bit here, so it doesn't get too dark there. And a bit there, there. Not too much, just a bit to make him darker. Now, obviously, this is way too light, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this layer first let me disable this this is for my backup if i need to go back and press ctrl e to rasterize this later so this is one layer now that's easier to work let me don't forget this and now i can make a new layer create a clipping mask and fill it with 50 percent gray again and this time i'm gonna brush these flowers here to make them darker so the same as we did with this face I will brush his these flowers now with the burn tool. So first of all, highlights, of course. Let's bring this up. And first of all, brush the outer parts of these, of these flowers. So I'm just gonna do this roughly like that. And you can see here, we already getting a really cooler effect than it was before because this looks a lot more like, like more shadows going around it. It doesn't look too flat now. And that's really simple, just by brushing the outer part of these flowers. So that's enough. And now I'm gonna switch to midtones. And you can see here, I even used a pretty high exposure for this because I wanna have them really dark on the outer side. And now I can drop this, some midtones, and basically do the same. But now I'm also gonna brush the darker areas of these flowers. So here, 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 you can see all these shadows here that we can brush to get more depth in this, these flowers. Of course, these flowers are graphics, they are not real photos, so that's a little bit tricky. Sometimes it doesn't look right, but I think for this one it will be fine. And the next one, shadows, and drop this again to almost 40. Let's do it somewhere around 10. And I think this is already enough. Okay, so this area here above his head is a bit empty for me, so what I want to do is I want to have these flowers go a bit behind his ears to create some depth here so what i'm going to do is i can just easily take this layer and drag it a bit down like that to make sure it goes behind his ears and now if i make a mask here and i just select the black brush i can get rid of these and this will give the feeling that these flowers are like really around him behind him and not only like going around him but also behind him to create some depth and you can see here how easy I can just brush this away and that's pretty much it and I think this already looks a lot better now let's see let's put this in a folder and I'm gonna duplicate this and I'm gonna make a mask here because I only want to have the bottom part so I'm gonna make a mask and get rid of the top part here like that and now I can just move these a little bit up so I don't affect the top part only the bottom part just like that and also put it somewhere maybe like this you have to play around with these to have something nice so sometimes i can spend a lot of time on just dragging and rearranging stuff but i cannot do that or else the video is gonna get too long so let me brush a bit here let's see this one and make sure these are visible and let's see here I think this is already pretty good. And now these little things here, you can brush away to make sure it still looks natural. So let me get rid of this one. I think this one is a bit annoying. So you can really go into details like this. So try to be like really precise with all these little things, because if you, for instance, gonna print this on a large size and someone is gonna look at it with, with 
with all these details, you're gonna notice that there's a lot of flaws in this. So I try to make these little things right. So I'm gonna leave it like this. I think this is fine. Now let's also add some butterflies. I cannot find these, the site where I got these, but if you search on Google for butterflies PNG, butterflies PNG files, or maybe some stock sites, you can download butterflies if you want. So I don't have these in the description, but you can figure that out yourself. It's not that hard. And let's put some butterflies here to get some stuff also on his face. Let's do another one. Let's see. Maybe this one. Doesn't really matter. You can also use other images. You don't need to use the same images. Try to find your own images. So you get used to the process of finding images like these. And of course they look really fake now. So we have to fix that. Maybe this blue one. Not sure about the blue one. This is really a different color tone from all the other stuff. So usually I try to avoid like one of these. But maybe this will work if we duplicate this. And let's... Flip this horizontal, maybe somewhere here. Right, and now we need to make sure these orange tones are the same. So I'm gonna add the hue saturation to these butterflies and just drop these colors like that. And now if I duplicate this layer, I will place it also on this butterfly, make sure I press this, and that's also good. Now we need to make sure this has a bit of a shadow. So let me first see what I'm gonna place this, maybe here on his head, and if I, Press Ctrl J and then press Ctrl E. It's gonna rasterize. Press Ctrl U to bring up the hue and saturation and bring the lightness down. Then go to Edit, Transform, flip this vertical. And now I can just rotate this a bit. Make sure it's underneath this layer. And the only thing I have to do is to drop the opacity here. Maybe some blur also. Filter blur, Gaussian blur to add some blur to this shadow of this butterfly too. Make it look more real. You can also press Ctrl 3, stretch it out. If you have lighting coming from there, you need to make sure the, oh, the shadow is on the other side. So shadow will be on that side. Something like this, fine. Just a little detail. This one don't need a shadow because obviously it's flying somewhere there. Maybe some shadow for this. So I'm gonna do the same. Press Ctrl U and put it underneath it and put some shadows on these flowers here. Just little details to make this look a bit more real. And also some blur. And let's also do it for this one. Duplicate it, Ctrl U, bring up, bring down the lightness, add some blur, filter blur, Gaussian blur, drop the opacity and that's it. All right, now we need to work on the lighting to make this better. Let me see, maybe a bit here on the side. Let's work on the lighting. So first of all, we need to, let's create a light source here. I'm gonna go all the way up, create a new layer and just make a, make a dot. A little bit yellow, almost to white. This is what I always do. So it's the same process. Just create a dot here. Make sure your hardness is at zero and paste the flow at 100. Make a dot, and this is our light source. Don't make it too yellow. If it's too yellow, it's gonna look cheap. So press Ctrl U and bring up the lightness to make it more to white, almost white. Just like that and make it bigger. You can also stretch it out. So this is our source of light now, some lamp or whatever. All right, let's also change the lighting of these butterflies, especially this one. I'm gonna add some curves to this. I'm gonna make them dark like that. And then just check, take a brush and brush some parts lighter like that. And you can see instantly how this looks a lot better than it was before. Just by doing these simple little tricks to get some darker and lighter areas. Let's also do it for this one. Just add a curve, bring down the lightness, the highlights, and brush one part lighter again like that. Maybe a bit more like that. Not too light. All right, also do the same for this one. So you can imagine how long this will take if you're gonna do everything in details. And especially if you like me make a tutorial of it, I can spend a lot of time on getting all these little things right. So 
Now I'm just doing it quickly, but if this wasn't the video, I was doing this really precisely. I will zoom in a lot and try to make everything perfect. Let's see, let's do it like that. Maybe only here. So this is already fine. Now we need to add some more depth in this. I feel like it's a bit flat. Let me save it first. Don't forget to save your work. And to add some depth, we need to add some blurred stuff. So the easiest way is to just take like these flowers here, press Ctrl J to duplicate them, press Ctrl E to blur them, or sorry, to rasterize them, make them a bit bigger, put it above all the other layers. Let's see all the way up like that. And just give it a blur. Oh, filter blur, Gaussian blur. And now we can blur out the outer parts. And you can see here we already get more focus on the center of this image instead of the sides. And let's see, now we need to find a good range. You can blur it out really a lot, like that. This will give the image a look like it's going really deep inside this area that we created. But you can also do it less blur, then you have less depth. So maybe something, let's do it a bit more. Something like this is fine. You don't want to ruin all these flowers, so place them somewhere like at the edge, at the bottom. Don't place them too much. You don't want to ruin your design with it, you want to improve it. So obviously for this one I would even remove this part because I feel like it's too white now. It's kind of ruining this image, so maybe brush it a bit like that. That's already better. Get rid of these. Let's duplicate this and just let's get rid of this layer mask and let's see maybe here let's rotate it so i'm gonna rotate this also add some depth there at the top somewhere and again make a mask take a black brush and just brush some parts away this is just a little detail that you want to do you don't want to do it too much especially in this kind of setting just like that that's pretty much it. You can also add some blur in the background. For instance, if you want to create some more depth, you can also blur some things in the background, but I'm going to leave it like this. I think this is fine. Now, the next thing I would like to do is to work on this hyena itself. I feel like we can get the lighting a bit better. So let's see, this is our lighting. Let's create a new layer here and fill this with 50% gray. Change this to blend, to overlay again and then select the dodge tool. Let's first make the eyes lighter so we can see his emotion. Eyes are a bit green, we can even change the color of his eyes a bit maybe. Let's do it a bit like that, a bit lighter. Let's make a new layer. I wanna have this eyes separately. So I'm gonna make a new layer to do the other lighting and basically do the same, change it to overlay again and do some dodge now. Let's see. Let's do some dodge here. Maybe here. His fur is like really light, so I'm afraid I'm gonna do this too much. So I don't wanna do it too much. Now I'm gonna switch to shadows and drop this one a bit. Just a bit lighter, you can barely see it. But if you compare this before and after, you can see we get this stuff a bit lighter on the top. Let me leave it like this, this is fine. You can see I did some moving around here, added some butterflies, some parrots and all this little stuff, nothing special, just to make everything better. So the next thing to do is before I go to the final step is to add a bit of highlights to these flowers. So I'm gonna create a new layer on the layer of these flowers. So these are the main flowers and create a clipping mask and again, make this 50% gray layer, change it to overlay. And this time I'm gonna add some dodge to this to get some extra highlights on this. And this will be better for the end. And you can see here, I can just easily brush the top parts and make them lighter. And this will give a little bit more lighting effect to this. So this is just a quick little thing that I like to add to this. I think it looks a bit better than without it. It's not much, but you can still see it. Some areas don't need it, so maybe not here because this is a bit of a dark area. So let me get rid of it there, just at the bottom. 
and this is a little difference so you can see it here get a little bit more highlights and now let's save this as a png file and open this up in lightroom to add my secret sauce to this so this is into lightroom and here i'm gonna apply one of my presets if you check the link in the description you can get these these are really good and you can see the difference it makes of course this is a bit dark so i have to change the settings a bit but you can see here how cool i can make this artwork look now just by applying one of these presets so i'm probably gonna apply this one and this one and I open this up back in photoshop to do some final adjustments and that's pretty much it but i'm not gonna go into that because your design is probably totally different from this one so thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed this video and hope to catch you on the next one